Check, check, check. Just checking really quick. Make sure my audio is good. All right, I guess I can close that window or turn it off.
How is everyone doing? Hello, all you sexy dice rollers. There we go. Got my got my control panel up the way I want it. Oh, happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Got some hot tea. Oh. So this is actually the very first stream uh, for tabletops and anvils as far as uh, something that's going to be hopefully uh, quite often. Uh, I want to do several several nights a week, you know, just to talk about Foundry and different modules and uh, just tabletop RPGs all to, you know all together. So we'll see how that works. So thanks a lot for tuning in. I am going to do a little housekeeping here really quick. Uh, so mo Module Monday, what is it? Well, uh, Module Monday is essentially, we're gonna look at a few uh, recently updated modules, see how they work. Maybe some things that I don't normally use or modules that we do use, but don't really think about too often. So, let's see, let me get this screen up where I want it, and I'm, I'm starting to use something, something new here, I've got a, uh, a Stream Deck application, so uh, you'll have to excuse me if I, if I hit some of the wrong buttons every once in a while, it's just part of the learning curve. But, there we go. So, uh, as far as modules go, uh, what I'm looking at right now is um, we have, uh, there's Drag Ruler. I want to take a look at that tonight. Um, I also want to take a look at Pathfinding Ruler. I don't have that one enabled at the moment just in case they... Uh, kind of go or contradict each other um then i've also got uh what's it called radugen or random dungeon generator we'll take a look at that and uh also new is uh wall height there's just an update so we'll see how well that works uh, i'm really interested in wall height just because i uh you know i I think it can make for some very uh, more realistic maps. So, I'm going to just turn this music down just a little bit. And I want to get my little streaming chat room up. So we might as well dive right into it. Um, start off, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at Drag Ruler uh, version 1.1.1, um, and let's see if there's any configuration options for that. Uh, let's see, Drag Ruler. All right. So, okay, so it has uh, it has speed settings, which is pretty cool, um, and I guess it's very uh, system specific. Uh, show PC speed to everyone. All right, uh, speed attributes, all that stuff's all in there. That's good, and dash multiplier. What's dash multiplier? Uh, this can be used to give tokens a secondary speed during coloring of the measured path. Okay. Well, that's all interesting. Ooh, look, Pretzel's actually uh, putting up what's playing in the background. Cool. So we'll take a look at that. I do want to do something very quick, though. Let's get a new window going. 
just so I can take a look. happening there we go cool nice yes yeah, so you get to see all my restream stuff actually uh, streaming on not just twitch but also on YouTube and on D live as well and I believe chatting is possible on discord if you go to our discord server so let's take a look at Drag Ruler. Uh, I like the fact that it doesn't have a lot of options, so it's not overly complicated. So I'm just going to grab... Uh, let's move our character out of the way here. And uh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's go full screen on this. There we go. That looks good. So, let's see what happens when I drag. Oh, there we go. So, purple his movement uh, this is Dossi and Pietra. His movement is 20 feet, so let's see what happens when I go. Okay, so when I go past it oh, it's nice. It gives a, a nice coloration showing us the speeds. So, if I stop see what happens when I release okay well the token still moves all at the same speed It'd be kind of nice if uh, the token slowed down a little bit you know to represent that speed but well that's pretty cool now probably because I'm in DM mode uh, it's allowing me to drag through objects but that's pretty good it gives you a, gives you a nice uh, idea of how fast you can actually move your token and I guess everybody else let's take a look at those uh, settings one more time uh, da -da -da -da. Hey, welcome. See, somebody just dropped in on chat. Let's see. Uh, so back to drag roller. Yeah, again, not not many options there. Huh. Okay, so if I take this down, I'm assuming if I take the dash multiplier down, let's try this once. Okay, and it just changes the visual representation of it just slightly. Not sure which I like better though. This is one of those that our regular game every other Friday. I'm sure Eric will absolutely love this. I don't really see much of a difference there. But anyway, that, so that's Drag Ruler. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take... I'm going to disable Drag Ruler and I'm going to take a look at Pathfinding Ruler. See what the difference is between the two. Hmm. Got some hot tea tonight. Always a good thing. Just checking to make sure my sound is... Hopefully my levels are good. Uh, let's... Uh, so I enabled the module. Let's take a look at its configuration settings. Okay, GM only. If check players will not have access to use the tool, well, that's kind of kind of pointless. 
and max measuring distance 40 huh well i'm gonna set this to 60 because we've got some i've got a monk in one of our campaigns that can definitely use this um but how do we how do we use it you'd think or is it an option up here aha uh -huh. so let's see okay so it's skipping there's a there's a wall around an environmental wall around this tree cool so it tells me that it's 20 feet then a turn and I wish we give it a total so let's see let's uh Now, there's no option to automatically move. Well, now, how do they... Uh, I wonder how they work side by side with our other module here. So let's go ahead and put drag ruler back in. One annoying thing about Foundry is that every time you uh, redo modules, kind of refreshes the screen. It's all right. Gives us some well-deserved downtime. So there's our drag ruler. Now I'm going to zoom out here just a little. Uh, we need a place where... Now, can I only do this on a token? Yeah, I guess I can only do this on a token. Wish there was a way to automatically move. You know, kind of like just let go of it and have it have it go. Um, I mean, it's a cool tool. Let's uh, let's move him over here. It's a little bit more complicated. See, I'm trying to think what's actually going to be uh, more used by us, and it might be it might be this drag ruler, um, just because, man, it helps with the speed and everything. But let's see how this works going around. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's definitely going around things. Um, I don't know. It might. Hey, Chuggy, how you doing? I hope you can hear me all right. We're just checking out different uh, different ruler modules for Foundry right now. So, uh, something something different, you know. I figured, uh, you know, rulers are something that that we use an awful lot. Uh, but the two that I'm looking at, one of them, uh, the drag ruler here, is pretty cool in the fact that. Uh, let me just switch back. So you see how it changes color there based on uh, each character's speed um, or movement. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Dossi in here only has a movement of 20. So after 20, he, uh, you know, basically fades off at 55 feet. You know, it shows that he's really slowed. Um, and then the, the other one is... Uh, this which is a pathfinding ruler which is kind of cool but a little little clumsy on how it's being used or how you have to use it i like i said i i wish that i wish that you could actually take this and once i'm done measuring is there is there a button that i can use you know if i hit enter or space or whatever to just go ahead and move the character along that path uh that would make this module really cool but oh yeah look I can actually uh, 
I just put out I just put out a new update about 10 15 minutes ago uh, of the foundry stream module so uh, someone someone was telling me that uh, essentially emotes from twitch were still getting passed into foundry uh, when the receive from twitch option was turned off so uh, sure enough I went in and it was just one little line of code that I had forgotten to add to the emotes I was so happy to just get emotes up and running uh, because my 21 year old son you know found that uh, absolutely hilarious he he now wants me to incorporate a whole nother set of emotes we'll see ah so yeah i mean it would just be cool though if this uh if that pathfinding module had another option let's uh i'm gonna take a look here really quick uh let's create another let's see pathfinding ruler uh foundry vtt let's see if we can find the github for this and uh See if there's. I don't see any. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any sort of uh, options like what I was talking about. Who wrote this? Moth Ringer. Not familiar. Let's take a look at the change log. So this is relatively new. Um. I mean, I guess. Of course, it looks like it wasn't updated for three months. I wonder wonder if this is inactive. Might have to ask some people in the league as to what's going on with it. I was hesitating uh, updating my module, uh, the stream module, this week just because on Thursday we've got... Uh, there's going to be a whole... Uh, essentially a live stream from Atropos uh, regarding... Uh, regarding what's coming up new in Foundry. So Friday, uh, if there's, depending on what goes on, I'll, uh, I'll stream that on Friday and uh, give a breakdown of how it's going to affect. Essentially, it's, uh, you know, version 8's coming out, 0 0.8.0. And uh, there's going to be a lot of different changes. Most of that stuff's under the hood. Uh, like, you're not really going to notice anything uh, really there supposedly there isn't going to be much that's uh really apparent at first uh probably see more of that with uh 0 0.8.1 but <clears throat> you know the with the new version coming out it's going to give us a couple of weeks to figure out what uh what gets broken because when things get changed around under the hood uh we don't really have <laughs> You know, with with our modules, it's essentially updating them to get them ready for uh, the next version. So, hopefully, hopefully the stream module doesn't need anything. Um, we'll see how that works. But yeah, so I guess uh, we'll wrap up the 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 drag ruler. That I mean, it, it's kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I, I like the Pathfinding Ruler. I just wish that there was more to it. Uh, it will come in handy, but it's just a little clunky as far as having to come down here, click. I mean, this one, you just enable it and drag it, and uh, this is Drag Ruler, and that just shows you the speed, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, before I uh, forget about this, I'm going to... Uh, I guess I can't turn that off, can I? I wanted to see if I could turn off... Uh, the, the app that I use, that I'm using for music here, is called Pretzel. And uh, kind of cool. It's all... I can set it so that it's all YouTube safe and Twitch safe music. Uh, things that, you know, I don't have to worry about royalties. And I guess one of the ways they, uh, they're making their money is by putting an advertisement in our stream every time the track changes... So, 
Can't begrudge them that. I guess I could do the uh, professional version. I didn't look into the cost of that yet. So, oh boy, let's let's look at uh, what module should we take a look at next? So that was uh, drag ruler and pathfinding ruler. Um, the other one I wanted to take a look at. Let's take a look at the random dungeon generator. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go in here. Now, I noticed there's a couple of different ways. When I enabled this, there's a Generate Dungeon button here. There's also one under Scenes. I just imported a bunch of scenes into... This is my development uh, version of Foundry. And so I just, uh, I just put a bunch of scenes in there. Uh from our regular game server so it's all still you know the importing stuff from exporting it and importing it there's a great little module uh i'll actually show that off really quick this adventure importer exporter is really really handy especially if you have more than one server or you want to just make a backup of it uh it's really nice but i'm not saying that there's not going to be some work if you uh you know, when when you export and then import it back in, it's not exactly exporting the exact same way that uh, that it looks in your game. So there's going to be some work regardless. But to have a nice backup of your server, uh, you just never know when things are going to go down. So but let's. Uh, so random dungeon generator uh let's see we've got a scene path tile resolution uh pretty walls walls will be rendered for player quality um no walls will be created prettier walls walls will be rendered for player quality and strict in this mode there will be no corner peaking huh not exactly sure what that is, but we'll take a look. Um, I guess we'll just keep in mind it's in modules, Radugen, uploads, and scenes. So let's see how this works. Uh, this, I think, was something that uh, Atropos was actually working on during the hackathon. Um, so we've got our dungeon generator uh i guess different different generator engines let's just go with what it gave us and um i don't know let's make a large dungeon see how this works okay whoa there we go and it put it right up in the scenes that's kind of nice Let's activate this. Oh, very cool. I mean, for something that, for a tool that, you know, you just want to use very quickly, uh, that seems pretty nice. Let's, uh, oh, let me grab, we'll grab Dossian there. So did they put walls in? Yes. Okay. So the walls are in there. And. Everything looks pretty clean. Easy enough to go in and change it if you wanted to. So, but that means that, oh, let me change his vision. No, not 600 feet. 60, 30. There we go. Okay, so that's why the second barrier was there, just so you can actually see the texture that the whole map is generated with. All right. I'm 
I'm not so sure I'm I'm keen on this whole uh, faded green to blue to sort of gray. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think this could come in handy. Uh, under the right click menu, um, you mean right here when I do this, and and all those all those buttons there. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, so that's actually part of Pathfinder. So if you were um, if you're playing Pathfinder uh, 1E. I'm not sure about 2E, but uh, yeah, this is part of Pathfinder 1E. And uh, so it's really nice that I can just go ahead, click it, and, you know, do my rolls. Um, and I know, I don't think there's anything out for 5E. I, I do play in a 5E game uh, every other Friday, and I don't think, I, I'm I'm really mixed about 5e right now. I don't know that I like it. Um, and I know Pathfinder, you know, first edition is, uh, you know, we, we joke and call it Mathfinder because, hey, it is. Uh, but I don't know. It, it's closer to the uh, the second edition uh, that, you know, second edition D&D that I played when I was a kid. So um, it feels a little bit more like home. Uh, although I'm still pissed that there's no Thacko. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if there's something... I mean, it, it probably wouldn't be all that difficult to uh, to make that. Uh, but since I don't play... Uh, since I don't play 5e, uh, I, I don't know. I don't really have any interest in making it. And I'm not... I'm I'm more of a background kind of guy, you know. I I like dealing with you know the stuff like the the Twitch mod I wrote. Um, you know, I like using this or doing this stuff more than I like trying to play around with the user interface. I suck at things like HTML and CSS, and that's what a lot of the uh, yeah I've seen token token action HUD. Is that the one where it puts it up like in in the upper left hand corner of the screen or whatever, and you can touch it, and it'll do different things like your uh, uh, insight checks and perception and uh, is that is that the one that I'm thinking of? Yeah, man, HTML and CSS just suck. Uh, it is uh, it's some it's some horrible shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can drag it to different areas. That's cool. Uh, like I said, the the game that we play every other Friday, uh, you know, that's that's one of those things where, uh, you know, our my buddy Chris has it set up, and uh, so I'm playing in playing in his world, and he's got set how he wants it, and uh, not being not being uh, a GM in his, uh, in his server is kind of weird because I'm so used to being able to go in and play around with everything and configure it exactly how I want it. <laughs> but, uh, Chris does a great job. So, um, yeah, that's cool though, that you can drag it to different areas. I found it pretty, pretty help helpful. Um, at, at first I'm, I'm, I'm still getting used to it cause I don't know where everything is. And there's, there's something there, uh, I'd have to look at his server to, to remember what it is, but it seems like something that I'm looking for should be under this one option, and it's not. And so that's kind of that kind of drives me nuts, just because it takes me a little bit of time. But, um, but, and yeah, I get that it that it takes up a little bit of screen space, but after a few games, I don't think I've really even noticed it being there. Um, but that's one of the reasons why with the uh, stream mod, why I wanted to do this tab chat. Um, mainly, my original idea had been to uh, make a floating window, kind of like, uh, kind of like if we if we pop out the combat tracker. I, I sort of wanted to have it like a floating window that you could go ahead and put over here. And um, I, I nixed that idea when 
when I did this. And so having it so I can actually read your Twitch, you know, messages right here from my server is kind of a cool thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take a look. So I want to see what these different options are. Uh, let's generate another dungeon. Uh, we did large last time, so we'll stick with large just so we can compare. Um, so first one was Gen B3. Let's see what the difference is. Um, ooh, looks like we have uh, possibly a different coloration. Yeah, it 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 was it was a bit much, and uh, I I was looking at the the code for um, the tab chat log module, and I was like, well, this probably wouldn't be too hard to implement, mm -hmm. and just having the two really makes a, a much better uh, interface, I think, where it's just not as confusing for everyone. Uh, there's still a few little CSS errors, but. Uh, again, I hate doing CSS and HTML, and it's just refreshing things. That so it doesn't bother me all that much. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna pour myself a cup of tea. Um, figure I should have some hot tea before I before I go ahead and crack a beer open for later on tonight. Uh, Uh, hey, which which explanations are you talking about? I I sometimes I feel like I don't explain anything at all. But <laughs> I don't know if I can if I can be helpful. I guess that's uh that's good. But uh, okay, so now what I'm wondering is let's do so we've got a, a stone sort of pattern here. Eh. I'm not exactly sold on it, but hey, you know, Foundry is uh, Foundry. Like, I came from from Roll Twenty, and uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, Roll Twenty was you know was the first. It was essentially the originator, and uh, I liked it, but. It really needed to be updated, you know. Um, there were definitely, definitely things in that that were very ancient and archaic, and uh, need to need to be addressed. So, um, but we switched over. We, were, I was looking at Astral uh, at first, and uh, you know that was, I think, still, still in beta or something. And I don't remember why I didn't go with Astral or even download it and try it out. Maybe it's because I'm a Mac guy. No, no, I don't think that's what it was. Um, but things like uh, what, what's that? What's that other one? Uh, Fancy Grounds. That 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 annoyed me with their uh, their their payment method. Uh, I first off, I didn't want to spend like three hundred dollars just to get uh, to basically fill it out to to get everything that i i needed uh for the games that we did and you know we were only playing every other week so it really didn't make sense um and then also the fact that you know players need a client it's not a web interface um <clears throat> yeah so you know what i mean when i when i talk about like you look at it and it's like okay well i get that there's a, a certain set price here but then when you start looking at adding things onto it, uh, holy shit, I mean, those it, it just goes high. And uh, it can really add up very, very quick. And I think that's where, where Fantasy Grounds really gets you, is they kind of get you pot committed to, to be in their ecosystem. And then if you want to do other things, uh, it's just, you know, yeah. It really, it, it would dwindle my wallet quite a bit. Uh, whereas with Foundry, you know, the, the $50 one-time fee, when when I looked at it and I, I saw how polished it was, you know, kind of like a, 
a much better looking roll 20 uh and it it works better you know um so when i saw that <clears throat> excuse me so for 50 bucks you know i was like well this is this is definitely worthwhile and granted there's i'm a i'm a linux and mac guy so setting up a, a server i set up my server on uh well, I've actually got a couple of different servers, but uh, I've got an Ubuntu box uh, down in my basement uh, that actually is a server for me testing things out. And then I've also got a uh, Google uh, virtual machine and uh, a digital ocean server as well. But um, yeah, and it's, you know, that that part was I could see how that could be a little bit of a turnoff, but still with uh, with Fantasy Grounds, the fact that everybody has to use a client software for it is at least as far as I know. Uh, you know, we've got some guys that uh, Eric, who actually GMs one of our games, um, yeah, he's got a what 2012 iMac. Uh, I can't be guaranteed that he's going to be able to run that software very well uh and here with the the you know html uh web interface i i just like it but then what i really like is the fact that we can if if you don't see a feature you can just go ahead and make it if you really feel so compelled uh that's what i did with the the you know the twitch integration the fact that the fact that this is so uh modifiable is uh i mean it's just tremendous and the community is really great um that's why, you know, that, that's why I decided that I was going to start doing this uh, on a on a regular basis, and I'm, I'm glad this is my my first uh, my first time. What do you call this? It's not podcasting and live streaming. Uh, so this is my first time doing this uh, by myself, uh, aside from you know recording a few things here and there, but uh, you know, first time actually trying to to do a regular stream so thank you guys very much for tuning in uh that's uh that's awesome you're here on the inaugural day so let's see what the difference is keep it on track let's see what the difference is so that was uh v2 i'm gonna just try this one more time with the same v2 um i'm wondering if that's the style that it's doing nope okay so that has nothing i wish that this was controllable um you know what type of tiles it's using but it seems to be very uh very random as far as that's concerned uh so let's let's delete that um let's check out our v1 generator So this is basically giving us different styles, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, the one thing, you know, I, I like the fact that it could, uh, you know, with, with Foundry, I, I like the fact that players can just log in. I do wish that there was a little bit more security uh, for keeping a server up all the time, but eh, that's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'll write something of my own. And Chuggy, you're right. If if you could pick what tiles are being used with this, and I don't see. I mean, I don't see any options as far as that goes. Let's let's look again back in the configure settings. Um, but I see tile resolution, um, wall mode. Yeah, I mean. I don't see anything though as far as doing the tiles and it seems like the generators are really just engines for creating how complicated they are um i mean that's a it's a nice size don't get me wrong i will probably use this but uh what i might use it for is to actually export it and then go back into dungeon draft and I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could see it if it's just a, a quick, uh, I don't know. We we always get players that, that end up doing something that you don't expect, and maybe they, uh, you know, pry off the grate 
in a back alley so that they can climb down into the sewers and you weren't expecting them to go to the sewers for you know another session or two so you didn't bother drawing them up i could see how this you know could definitely be handy but um and don't get me wrong i mean for for what it is it's it's nice but man i wish i wish we could uh I wish we could pick that tile set. That'd be that'd be really cool. So let's uh, we still have two more modes here. Let's see uh, see what they do. The different generators. So let's go to grid. Go back to large. <laughs> I like the fact that it gives you some some different names. Showy terrace of half dragons. All right. Well, let's let's activate this scene and see. Okay. That is literally just I don't even see any walls on this. This is I'm not understanding what this is for. Does anybody else have an idea? Anybody else have a clue? Um I mean, obviously I could sit here and draw my own walls in it, but I don't really want to do that. That is... That's pretty useless. <laughs> um, as far as I'm concerned, I mean... Let's see what we have. So this is... Well, that worked. Okay, and... Uh, see if we can make this a, a little bigger let's try that again let's go to large and static activate that scene okay well it doesn't seem to be building large at all we'll just keep on going so let me go back to grid here and uh, I don't know, let's try a huge map. Oh, I keep on hitting this. Yeah, I'm not really, I don't really see what the purpose of, uh, of this grid option is. Let's go ahead and delete that. <laughs> oh. Pardon me, I'm gonna grab some of my. I'm gonna grab a little bit of nicotine. I quit smoking this, what, 14 months ago, but I still, uh, I still really enjoy my vape. But I found it's really annoying. Uh, it's when it's close to the microphone, so I was just gonna mute myself really quick. If I can find the right button, ah. Hopefully that's not too annoying. Uh, yes, I want to delete that. I get the uh, the confirmation things. So, I mean, this map here is kind of cool, but but again, the fact that you can't—it's always that. It seems like it's all one size there. Um, yeah, it's a handy tool though. I'll definitely show it off to some of the guys I do games with they might find a, a nice reason to have it so let's uh where do I want to go for this next module um you know what this map right here should work I want to check out the the wall height module so let's uh This is just a, a little scene that I did uh, for a game that I ran over Christmas time. So, let's make sure wall height is actually, yeah, wall height's loaded. And let's take a look at any configuration. I don't know if there's configuration no, it doesn't look like there's anything in the module settings for wall height. 
Um, I think I have to go in here though under configure. Yep. So down below, in order to get to do anything, you've got to enable wall height for this scene. Uh, let's go ahead and drag. Uh, we'll drag camera guy in there. And uh, we'll just drag a bunch of people in. Take Bran and Dossian and do Zen. That should give us a couple of different options as far as looking. Um, so let's see. I've already got a few uh, a few walls in here, and this is a environmental wall. So let's take a look. Let's see how Dossian would see this. Um, so he can't walk over that. And it's blocking the light. But he can't see he can't see Bran on the other side of this. Um, not until he walks around. So the question is with wall heights, um, how's that going to affect things? Like if I if I set the wall at say three foot and then I put the character's elevation at uh, I don't know, five foot, shouldn't I be able to see over that three foot wall? So let's let's take a look and see how it actually works. At least that's what I'm assuming. Um, can I grab? No, that's not what I wanted. So let's let's see wall height top. Uh, let's do three foot since I said it. Um, Okay, so it makes an environmental wall. That's why they're green. Hmm. Okay, and I guess we need to set uh, Dossian's height. I'm still not... Let me make this full screen just so we have a, a bigger, bigger palette to work with. So I'm still not able to see the character on the other side. Let's uh, let's change Dossian's height. Um, I don't know. Let's put him at five feet elevation. Oh, that's interesting. What is up with this? You guys see? I've got... weird I've got some fragments just kind of floating in there some some ghosts some mystery men but I could delete them I wonder if that's from when you guys see that right there that's uh that's like some sort of remnant from when I was DMing in here had all the players open a gate nearby so let's see um, let's let's change his height to five as well and we'll go back here see I can't I don't get that why hmm I'm gonna have to look up some practical uses of this And oh, for some odd reason, his height. Huh. Why is his height not updating? Okay. Okay, so yes, I, I can see over it. I can see him now if I take my height back down to zero. Okay, so that, that is cool. It works the way I want it to. That's pretty neat. 
Um, we do a lot of different battle maps that have different elevations in it. So I can definitely see how this is going to come in handy. Huh. Yeah, I like that. So now if I go back and I change this again. And I guess you can do heights where like a bridge or something. So you could actually say that it's 25 feet up in the air and then, uh, but it's only five foot tall, so it stops at 20 feet and goes to 25 feet. And so then players could see other things underneath that. That's kind of cool. Um, okay, so now that I've changed that to 10 feet, awesome. So that means that Brand's disappeared. And But now if we take him up to 15... Now, he, Brand there can see Dacian, but Dacian can't see him because they're on different elevations. Interesting. I don't know that, that really works in the real world. Uh, if somebody is at a higher elevation, you should be able to see them, but, you know, hey, uh, definitely has definitely has a purpose for being used. Wow, here we go. Got the first hour down. I'm not even sure how long I'm going to go today. I just kind of like, uh, I don't know, I threw it out there last night. and So, well, let's, let's kind of take it, take it as it goes. See how my, my first time streaming sort of free form where I don't, have much of a reason for doing it uh, let's see how that that turns out but so these this the the three modules that we looked at um i can't say or four modules that we looked at i can't say that i uh i don't like them um i don't know um It's, oh, that's interesting, my my chat isn't showing up in there. I wonder why. Oh, maybe because it's not active. But, um, yeah, so wall height, I definitely see that that being, uh, there, there's definitely a purpose for that. And uh, so that's going to definitely stay in, in our games. Um, the dungeon generator... Again, uh, as a spur of the moment thing, I, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't see a reason not to use it. Um, I I like the drag roller, uh, the one that shows the speed. That's that's pretty cool. And I I like the measuring around objects. Um, let me let me go back to uh, let's see. So I, I I do like this this pathfinding ruler. Um, although it oh weird, that's interesting. I wonder how it, I was wondering how it might be affected. Interesting. So it's not going around. Let's see if I change uh, Brand's height. If we put him back at zero. Now, he shouldn't be able to... Really? Zero. Hit enter. Cool. Um, let's try this path tool again. Okay, so uh, it actually works based on his height as well. So if if he was at a higher elevation, he doesn't need to go around it. He can go over it. 
Interesting. Uh, that makes me wonder. Makes me wonder. Let's take him back to. I think that wall is at 10 feet, so let's take him back to 15. And can. Oh, look! And he can move over it now. Well, that's pretty cool. I wish that. Uh, I wish that there was a way to build maps that would automatically adjust um, your height, your elevation, so that you could have something that's like spiraling, you know, just to, to give a really cool topographical feel to maps. Um, I wonder if we could do that with some sort of trigger or, um, I don't know. It's bound to be something. That is, that is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to let Eric know about this as he's creating, as he's creating new maps and stuff. I think he'll definitely get a kick out of that. I'm sure he'll probably end up watching the stream at some point just to get an idea. Um... But yeah, so those uh, those four modules are pretty cool, and I am definitely going to put them into our regular server uh, for games. I don't know how often we'll use the random uh, dungeon generator, but it is kind of cool to just have there. Again, I still wish that uh, my my only gripe about that is the fact that not being able to set, you know, the tile, but that's minor when you need something fast. So, that is pretty cool. Oh, let's see. What else can we uh what else can we test out? Uh, let's see what other modules I have in here. This is kind of one that I I wish was in production. Uh, supposedly we're going to see um, we will see this module again it's called D&DJ uh, and I think he's he's waiting on uh, until 0.8.0 uh, .0 comes out uh, or uh, 0 0.81 just because there's a lot of stuff that we don't know what's going on with all the different audio aspects We've been promised a lot of, you know, an overhauled audio system, so we'll see. Um, but D and DJ is is pretty neat in the fact that um, I'll just show you what it does, um, and you can still download it. It's just not listed. It's not listed as a Foundry module. You have to look for it. Uh, look for its GitHub. But so if I go here and. So basically, I can take this and I can set it to live. And I don't think you guys can hear it because I don't have the audio piped in that way. Um, but essentially, I can take this and slide it back and forth. And if I have, uh, say, another module loaded or another, uh, another track going on at the same time, let's see if I hit... I guess I only have the one, don't I? <laughs> Uh, let's let's put something else in. Um, no, I want to add. That's weird. Let's add something to it. Oh, I guess I have to just. Uh, let's see. Pretty sure I have something in my downloads MP3. Uh, yeah. I'll just take any old thing and cool so just to throw it in there to say we did now why did that not oh there it is okay it's a large file so and so 
I don't think you guys can... Yeah, because I'm not doing this under Chrome. But essentially, if I have two songs going live, I can literally take this and I can slide the volume of my tracks. And, you know, for doing things like... And you can make this so it's, you know, two, four, six... Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of different volume levels. I think it's pretty cool, uh, especially for, you know, audio nuts. Uh, there are some guys that really like to get their, their games, you know, people that really like to get their games as particular as possible, and sound is a very big thing. So I like I like this little D&DJ module. Um, hopefully we'll see a cool update with it. Um, there, it's, it's not that there's still some issues with it, but, um, you know. For, for being a module that not too many people know about, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And there's a slight learning curve if, if you've never used a DJ deck before. Um, some of these some of these options like queuing and fading, snapping, you know, fade I guess is is pretty uh, that's pretty ubiquitous. But uh, yeah, snapping and you know uh, the queue and live. I don't really think that Q works all that well because you can't have multiple uh, sound outputs in Foundry as of yet. But uh, still, it's a it's a pretty cool little module, and I'm anxiously waiting to see what what gets updated with sound here. Uh, we'll probably find out more on that uh, on Thursday. So here on on my stream, I'll probably I think I have. Uh, Foundry set up to auto host. So if you guys, you know, want to watch along and, you know, don't, if you're not subscribed to uh, the Foundry list uh, or, yeah, the Foundry Twitch page, uh, it'll, it'll end up popping up here as well. But, uh, so we'll get to find out exactly what's going on with, with audio. And, uh, and then hopefully that will give uh, the people behind D and DJ which I love the name as well. Uh, that'll give them time to uh, figure out the direction that that's going to head in. Let's see, see what else we have in here. Obviously, dice so nice. Everybody has that. The adventure importer exporter. I showed that off at the very beginning. I, you know, just like that for moving stuff from one one place to another, and also just for backing up your information. I've I've had uh, two pretty good server crashes in probably the past I don't know I'd say probably past eight months and I'm not saying that those server crashes weren't because of something I did um, as as a uh, guy who is also a developer um, I can I can wreak havoc on my on my own system that's for sure but uh, yeah we're gonna keep we did uh, drag ruler, uh, easy exports. I use that for if you're if you're looking for a way to uh, export your journal entries or export them into compendiums. Uh, that's actually how with Foundry Stream Module I do my documentation. Uh, I I do that as a uh, journal entry and then export it. But let's see, Foundry Community Macros always kind of cool uh foundry stream module of course my personal favorite um now i just looked at lordu's custom dice for dice so nice uh i loaded it but didn't really do too much there uh pathfinder 1e content as far as as far as these live streams go i i think i'm going to uh, at least for the time being, stay away from very system specific stuff. I kind of want to, I kind of want to stick with system agnostic uh, modules, just because there's so many game systems out there uh, that people could be, you know, uh, using, and there are modules very specific. Like there's stuff that can only be used in 5e, and stuff that can only be used in Pathfinder Second Edition or Pathfinder First Edition, or Star Wars FFG. Um, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of different game systems out there that have their own specific module sets. So, in in order to reach the biggest, uh, 
you know, the, the biggest amount of an audience, I think, I think sticking to stuff that's system agnostic is probably a good thing. And I kind of want to, I, how I, uh, how I got the idea for doing a, a module Monday, uh, was basically looking through all the, all the releases. So I want to look at stuff that's basically been released or updated in the past week. And so that's, that's the direction that I'm going to go for, for Mondays. Take a look at those. Um, but I'd also like to, I'm in some of the developer chats and I would really like to invite some of the, uh, I'd really like to invite some, some other developers on here to get them to show off their modules, um, which is fairly easy to do. And we could do the, uh, we could do the video chat actually, uh, right in foundry itself. So, um, yeah, the pathfinding roller, that was pretty cool. The random dungeon, dungeon generator, bleh. try saying that five times fast. Um, Underhill streaming audio. Well, that's something I won't talk about too much yet. I'm working on. I actually created a uh, a streaming audio player for uh, our game because we have a internet radio station up on one of our servers that just does nothing but game music, and uh, yeah, so it's a, a client side streaming audio player that works inside foundry and the cool thing about it is you can use uh off the shelf dj software to broadcast to the server and then the server the the, the radio station server will send it into foundry itself um it's a little bit of a complicated setup so i don't know that it would have mass appeal but um i don't know i just wanted to do it to see if i could so maybe i'll work on that tomorrow or later on this week i don't know um i'm hesitating on on working on any module stuff i did one update today just to make sure that emotes weren't going through uh when uh received from twitch was turned off so uh that that's the the small little 0.2.2 u that u stands for update uh that's probably going to be the last update I do until I actually get my hands on 0 0.8 uh, Foundry just because I want to see what changes in, in the new uh, the new version here. But the Universal Battle Map Importer, um, that's really nice. If you use Dungeon Draft, that works really, really cool. Um, I did all these maps in, in Dungeon Draft, and... Uh, let me let me see if I can find a a little bit more complicated one. Um, let's see. Um, well, Kindleheim's kind of. This is just a huge map, um, but it will give you an idea. So when I click on. here well actually this map is not a good good idea oh here we go let's uh let's see how this one did all right now this map is really freaking huge and i may uh i i'm debating releasing this i don't know why that's skewed um did i do walls in this one no. I'm trying to find one that I did walls in. Of course, I also imported these, but yeah, this map is just freaking giant. This is a castle that's actually in Wales. Um, all right. Here we go. The inn. So what's cool about using the uh, battle maps, the universal battle maps importer is, let me clear all these guys. Yeah, the, these are all characters that were here the last time we used this game or these maps. And that's just interesting that they're 
all still kind of sitting around. Um, but yeah, so the inn, the inn is a, uh, a feature of my games that kind of comes and goes as it pleases. Um, but I drew all this in uh, Dungeon Draft. And now, aside from, you can see like tables and chairs and seats and stuff like that. It won't do the environmental walls around it. But all your main walls and windows and doors, uh, the the importer, you know, you can actually export those from Dungeon Draft, and the importer will go ahead and put them in. Plus all of our lighting effects, which is really just kind of neat as well. Um, so all of these lights were actually put in in Dungeon Draft, and uh, the only thing is you have to go back and you know reconfigure certain things uh, for animation and stuff like that but uh, you'll see like all the fireplaces have you know all the all the lighting all set up uh, the only thing it doesn't do is sound and uh, you know that's that's fairly easy to do but the walls is I mean that's just that's such a, a time saver the walls and windows and doors um, the fact that The fact that you can export them from Dungeon Draft and then this importer will pull them in. And it also does uh, Dungeon Fog, which I'm not... I don't think I've ever used Dungeon Fog. Um, I'm not sure. Is that a is that online or is that... Uh, whoops. Let's take a look. Huh. Give me just a second, guys. I'll be right back. Sorry, I had a border collie emergency. She, uh... <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you. So I have a border collie who uh, decides that she can just make herself whatever she wants. Uh, and I caught her out in the kitchen. Um, I, had, I had done a steak sous vide tonight and I left the, uh, the vacuum bag sitting on the counter... I thought I heard something rustling in the background there. Sure enough, she uh, she really liked the, the the bag that that steak was cooked in. So let me uh, I just want to go up here. Let's see, um, dungeon fog. Hey, see ya, Chuggy. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming in. You have fun doing your prep. I, I, I actually like doing game prep a little bit more than, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. The games are always fun, but, uh, I really, I really enjoy the whole game, game prep thing. So let's see what's, what's dungeon fog. Oh, is this an online sort of like incarnate? Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I think Wednesday I'm going to go through and I really want to take a look at, uh, some assets and things like that. Um, Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, it uses cookies, huh? So, let's see. Sign up for... Oh, this is the... Uh, okay. Project Dios. Um, that This has a lot of promise. It has an awful lot of promise. Um, yeah, I think we'll save that for... We'll save that for Wednesday. My whatever Wednesday. Uh, cause I really want to take a look at this and I like the art style that it's using. That's my, that's my only, oh wow. That's pretty cool. If you see all that stuff happening in the background there. And I mean, I know they're, they're only doing the, the cool stuff to sell what's going on, but, um, yeah, that, that's pretty neat. Um, but I like their, their base art style. And while I'm not opposed to the cartoon more cartoony kind of look of uh of dungeon draft and i mean i've got uh 
I've got other asset packs that you know are not as cartoony um, but still no, that's pretty cool I'll have to sign up for this and uh, the 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 project Dios uh, or Deos I, I don't know how you pronounce it but um, yeah, that's pretty cool I wonder what pricing is let's see So six ninety a month, um, as on demand, or four ninety a month. I mean, still getting you for like forty eight bucks a, a year. Um, yeah, fifty dollars a year. I don't know. We'll have to take a look at it. We'll do that on Wednesday. It's, compare uh dungeon fog and dungeon draft and see see what we like better um because i like i said i i love doing game prep i love creating maps ah and now i'm all done with my tea so that means i get to switch over to uh black and tan so uh yay Hey, it's almost 7.30 at night. It's not like I can't drink a beer. I'm an adult. I could drink a beer at 7.30 in the morning if I wanted to. I just don't happen to want to. Often. But, uh, yeah. So, let's go back to here. Were there any other modules that I wanted to take a look at? Uh, we did the wall height. We did the... Oh, that's that's where that tangent came from. Looking at the Universal Battle Map Importer, so yeah, let me let me just show how that that actually works. For those of you new to Foundry and possibly just new to uh, this importer, so it puts a it puts a button down here at the bottom of your screen, and uh, you can just go ahead name it. Um, I don't know. We'll just do test two. I'm not even sure what I have in here. Um, go to my documents. Yeah, yeah. I need to clean all this stuff up. Um, oh, let's look at. Let's look at Harlot Castle the way I actually did it. Um, oh, we'll call it. Harlick Castle uh, Alter. I'm not sure if this one's done at all or not. The only the only thing uh, with this is that it does it, it can take a little bit of time to uh, get everything uploaded and generated. So let's see. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that to show up. I think it pops something up on the screen to let you know that all the rendering has been done. There we go. Yep. So, Harlot Castle Outer. Let's see if this has all the walls in it. Oh, hey, thanks for the follower. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Hey, it's the first time I'm actually getting to check that out. I I like these little activation triggers. So, let's see if uh let's see how the walls are in here. Oh, cool. So all the walls for this castle uh, are in there. Again, this is a... I, I really want to use this, but man, it's so huge. Hey, I, I enjoy the comfy vibe myself. Uh, 
This is, I should really pull my, there we go. Now I've got my, my Twitch chat window up in Foundry. Um, yeah, you know, there's no pressure here. This is just, just kind of chilling out and uh, looking at some, some modules for Foundry and uh, things that I went through a bunch of stuff that was updated earlier. And uh, now I'm just kind of wasting time and I got nothing better to do. So, um, but yeah, so this, uh, that universal dungeon, uh, importer did all these walls here and, and now you still need to go back when you have assets, uh, such as, you know, tents out here in the marshalling yard and, uh, you know, your stairwells and things like that. There, there's still some work to do and I'm not sure why. Oh, okay. Okay. When I when I zoom in here, yeah, okay, cool. So, I guess I guess I made a little bit of an error when I did that. Seems like the wall extends a little bit. This was this was pretty tough to do. We had a we had a pretty good snowstorm before Christmas, and uh, I didn't feel like going anywhere, so I took the blueprints for Harlot Castle. And I literally did them to scale in Dungeon Draft for use in Foundry, and uh, I think it I think it turned out pretty cool to to have that scale uh, castle, and I actually did three floors I think or two floors or three floors I can't remember. Um, we still haven't used it yet in a game, so <laughs> we'll see what we'll see what happens, but uh, the. The, the one issue is I was talking earlier about uh, one of the guys in our in our group has a uh, 2012 iMac and it just about shutters at the size of this whereas I've got a Hackintosh um, yeah, it was it was a little bit of work uh, I mean it, it definitely was a uh, I think I was like I said it was it was snowing so I'm pretty sure I had a, a bottle of Irish cream and uh, some hot chocolate with the Irish cream, and uh, I made a day of it. But um, it's just, uh, you know, what's, what's neat is to actually see this laid out. You know, each of those, each of the grids is, uh, you know, five foot. So um, it's just kind of cool to see the scale of this thing you know castles uh weren't exactly huge like they they seem to be represented in uh you know in movies or on tv shows but they were still pretty pretty big uh you know it's they, there's a lot to it uh and i still have a lot more to go in like you know there should be uh when we've got you know our uh all these different areas here i mean there's still i need to put tons of assets in here uh as far as like where where did the soldiers quarter you know uh and what are what are these uh these rooms out here for i started here with the uh you know basically like a weapons locker and uh we've got all the outdoor you know little little training yard um and i started with the uh the throne room and uh there's a chapel over here we've got a larder and uh you know basically away all the way from the kitchen into the larder and then uh this goes upstairs and then a back door into the uh the throne room um or the great hall and we've got our kitchen but yeah i mean there's just a lot more assets that that eventually need to go in there um hopefully hopefully eric gets a, a better computer here soon that can actually handle this like i said i'm i'm running a hackintosh uh so i i built my own and uh this thing's a little overpowered, but I'm not complaining about that. So, um, 
yeah this is this is definitely something i need to come back and uh and and revisit uh it's just kind of a cool map let's see oh why ah uh. Oh yeah, and this is where I was learning how to use the chain tools. Still need to get this a little bit better, but you can see the drawbridge there. And uh, gosh, let's let's just drag a uh, we'll drag a PC into there just to give you some some scale. So there we are. There's there's Dacian occupying his five foot space, and uh, so when we zoom out. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a decent sized map, <laughs> but and like I said, there's there's still two more floors to this, so um, I will probably you know I might just finish working on this. Uh, during a uh, during a Wednesday stream or something, uh, it's kind of relaxing, kind of cathartic to do. But um, and I kind of want to update these assets. This the, this was using all stock uh, uh, dungeon draft assets, and like I said, they're they're a little cartoony. So um, I don't know. I I like dungeon draft as a tool. It's it's definitely. Uh, oh, hey. I am not I am not playing a game. I'm I'm going through modules and uh thank you thank you very much Illicit Underground. Um no, I'm not I'm not playing. Uh I'm just showing off some modules and uh doing doing what will hopefully be um a regular Monday, Wednesday and Friday broadcast. So, uh, yes, Ruby, uh, it is, this is a castle that was actually created, uh, based on the blueprints of an actual castle in Wales. Um, so yeah, I did this to, did this to scale. I just, I took the, the blueprints that I found and, uh, basically drew over top of them. And, uh, I don't know. Oh, thank you very much, IU. Uh, yes, you know, this uh, this will probably be seen in a game at some point in time when I finish drawing the map. So, Chris, can you hear me all right? I, you know what I'm supposed to sound like. Um, so, I just uh, I was wondering how my audio was coming through. I decided to switch over to my Shure microphone, so um, yeah. Now we're doing now we're doing a XLR to USB, and so it gets a little complicated, and I can't hear myself. I don't have the monitoring set up yet. Uh, I'll do that sometime this week. I need to change some things around, but I want to be able to hear what I sound like just a little bit. It helps. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so with the with the uh, the dungeon draft uh, or universal dungeon importer, uh, that's that's exactly what you can do. So um, and the fact that the walls and stuff are already there and the the doors are already there as of when I drew them, plus the lighting, uh, it's just a big help. Um, you still have to go through and do a lot of manual editing on your maps, but if you're if you can knock out half of that i i think that's a i think that's a pretty pretty cool idea but yeah we'll definitely uh we'll definitely throw this this map i think uh i think eric wanted to use it but he was having such a, a hard time loading it on his old imac that uh it just hasn't been used yet so and I haven't finished it yet. So, <laughs> but 
let's see what other what other modules can we get into let's uh let's go back to setup here oh uh, let's just so one of the things that we're using one of the things i just installed on our game server is the uh Oh, token attacher was just updated. I wanted to take a look at this. Um, let's install that. And monks, little details. Uh, unfortunately, it's Pathfinder 2E and 5E only. So keeping with the system agnostic uh, theme, we're not going to do that. Yeah, like MIDI QOL. Everybody uses that, but again, we're we're not a, a 5e guy. So, uh, we just did, what was that? Uh, turn markers. So, these are going to debut. We've got a stream, not this Friday, but next Friday, or the Friday after that. We've got a stream coming up, so... Cool. Let's go back, launch the world. See what we got. This evening's live stream is being brought to you by Yingling Black and Tan. Yay. <laughs> All right. So, I think Token Attacher is really more or less meant for people that are, uh, say you have mounts. But I think this could probably come in handy for other things. So let's check these two out. I mean, I already know that we're, that we like, uh, turn marker and we're gonna, we're gonna use that here in the future. Uh, Oh, oh no, so I have to, well, why didn't you tell me that? Okay, well, let's return to setup. Apparently there is a dependency and there's an option when you're, when you're publishing a module to uh, ask it to download it. So let's uh, let's okay. Now we've got that going. Now it shouldn't scream at us. Uh, turn marker update. I really, I kind of want to do this. I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, this whole uh, change log thing. I kind of want to do this for Foundry Stream Mod, um, but I've kind of been putting it off as well. I don't want to. That's why. That's why I created a document or documentation for it and snuck it into your uh, into the journals. But. I just don't know that I want to be so in your face with uh, with updates. I don't think anything I do is all that major anyway. And how did we end up here? That's interesting. I don't remember loading this. Uh, yes. Eric mentioned that in in the chat and it's uh it's pretty cool um oh chris you might like this uh here let me let me th throw uh i don't know just somebody that's cheap and easy 
Bran Magisk, I believe his name is. Uh, let me give him. Don't worry, this is not in our game server. This is in mine, my development server. Uh, 60 and 30. We'll give you some. Give you some good light. So, uh, here's the. Let me just run around here and remove that fog of war. So, I added a module, and I think I'm going to add this to our actual game server. Um, it's. So, we've got two of them. One of them, uh, when I drag my your character, it's showing. See how the see how that's going around walls and stuff um and so it tells us that we're moving what 55 feet or 45 feet around here to the other stairs or 40 feet um so it's a kind of a cool way to measure things out around objects that's called pathfinder um and then the other one is like i don't know what let's see what brand's uh movement is 30 Okay, so when I click this at 20 feet, 25, 30, now all of a sudden it starts changing color to represent what the speed of your movement is. So anything in the purple is within your, uh, your actual range. So I don't know, it's just kind of cool, but I think I'm going to add them to the game server. Um, let's go back to Harlot Castle. I really need to adjust the starting point on this. Yeah, it's definitely a useful tool. I mean, uh, yeah, you'll dig this if you look at the if you look at the screen. Uh, you'll you'll probably get a kick out of uh, some of these transitions here. So, I I wish that I had a reason to use these in the game, but. Up in my upping my streaming game a little bit. And then take it back. But and turn markers. Turn markers are pretty cool. Let me uh let me go ahead and activate that. Boy, my my development server is going to have as many modules on it as our uh, regular game server. Luckily, I'm not I'm not one of those five E guys, so we only have like I think we have forty modules. And I know all these five E guys are probably like, how do you even play your game? <laughs> uh, let's see. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. Uh, there we go. Turn marker. Animate marker. Yeah. So, cool. That's on. And... Yeah, so... Let me drag... Let me drag a monster out of here. Do we have any monsters? Okay, maybe we have some... Really? Well, I guess we'll just... Uh, we'll make the wizard in the... The wizard and the uh, ranger fight each other. So, uh, if we take both these guys, put them into our combat tracker. Really? There we go. Cool. So, when I roll initiative and then begin combat, you'll see that whoever's turn it is automatically 
gets a marker underneath them. So that's kind of nice for keeping track of, uh, for keeping track of, you know, whose turn it is. I'm not sure. Does it say something in the chat window? Yes. And you can turn this off because that could get a little annoying. I, I do like having the, the little marker underneath it, though. So that's pretty cool. So let's uh, let's take a look at. I'm going to end this combat. And then I am going to take a look at token attacher. Woohoo. Let's see. Manage modules. Uh, token attacher is on. Um, it's kind of cool. It gives me. I like doing this. It gives me a reason to learn more of these modules. Oh boy. So let's see. Token attacher GM menu. Reset data model and force restart. No, we don't need that. Oh wow! So this is uh this is gonna get pretty uh. Let's force. All right. So how do we use token attacher? Yep. Uh, do we have? Aha! Open attaching UI. So, yeah, I think, like, if we had a horse or something here, uh, you know, we could actually put Dossian on top of the horse and... Uh, let's see. See if I can... I thought you could attach tokens to other tokens. Let's. Huh. Well, this is one of those I'm definitely going to have to uh, do a little bit of research on. I think it could be handy. Let's see if I select both of them now. Yeah, I know our uh, our game on Fridays, uh, or every other Friday, the Five E game that I play in, we have mounts in that game, and we're using a we're using a mod called Mount Up, and I'm it. I mean, it's an impressive amount of work. I just don't know that I necessarily like the way that it does it because it resizes your tokens. Um, so let's uh you know what I'm gonna over here let's uh horse token DD okay we just need something generic good enough save image um, we'll just put it on the desktop the way it's easy to find back in here and uh, so how do I make a placeable object um, hmm let's figure this one out what I want is I want to create a horse but I'm pretty sure NPCs let's just uh Oh wow, let's uh Yeah, let's make it an NPC. We'll call it horse. And 
Oh, you know what? There's actually a really good map or module for this. Uh, let's. Yeah, we'll take it back. Let's go back to our setup. So, there's a module called Drag Upload. Which just makes installing stuff like this so much easier. Yeah, 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 I know. It loves to yell at you, though. Okay. Oh, really? Why can't this be save image as? Okay. I don't know why it couldn't do that securely, but oh no, it's probably a virus. Ah, kidding. All right, so let's see if we can get this token attacher to work. From my understanding, you're supposed to be able to uh, do this. Now we have drag upload. Oh. I guess I should turn that module on. That always helps. I am just cluttering up my development <coughs> my development server. Oh well, I'll clean it up eventually. Let's see we've got some new people watching in Twitch. Hey, you know what? I didn't even check uh That's really weird. My my D Live doesn't update for me. I know there's somebody there, so okay, so drag upload, let's uh let's just make sure that everything is set up the way it should be. I guess there's no no settings for that, so um oh, and this is really annoying. I want to just because of how huge this map is. Um, if I have to... If I have to reload it again, I want it to start right here. So, initial view position. Cool. Alright, now let's... So, I want to take this... Let's try actorless. And... Um... We need to change our image size. Uh, that's like the size of a pony there. We need to go bigger than that. Um, so, two. Okay. Well, kind of works that way. Um, let's rescale this. Really, a huge of a difference, huh? Okay. This looks like something my daughter would ride. That's a little better. Oh. Are we really... Aha! So, we did attach them. Alright, let's, uh, let's unattach now.
Okay. Cool. So now he's independent. So let's... Uh, Why can't I? Oh, that's weird. Well, either way, let's just say I still kind of want to get the scale right on this. And I realize that has no bearing on anything. But it just doesn't look right. Okay. That scale looks a little better. So, anyway, and for some odd reason, shift is not working. Just double checking that I am holding shift. Normally, if you hold shift down while moving something, uh, you can put a you can put a token anywhere. Kind of ignore the whole grid thing. But let's take this and let's attach. Oh, Really? Why can't I just move Bran out of the way? Okay. There we go. So now, now he's attached to his mount, which is just kind of cool. Um, Yeah, and I think this uh I think this mod just got updated like yesterday. So um that's kinda nice to show off something that was just done. Now why can't I let's see how easy is it? Okay. And now I'm detached. Okay, I'm supposed to be detached. There we go. Let's see what I can do as far as... I wonder if they have to be squared up. That might... That kind of makes sense. So... Oh, cool. So that was Token Attacher. Is there another one I wanted to take a look at? Um, no, we already did Token Marker. Cool. Well, not too bad. I don't know. So what do you guys think? I don't know if anybody was here for the whole thing, but... Um, oh, here, I'll change. There we go. Oh, now I get to relax a little bit. Enjoy my beer. So, yeah, I think those modules are pretty darn cool. Um, I'm going to check something out here. I'm actually going to say something in... I don't think my... I don't think my uh, Twitch window is updating. Let's, uh, let's do a test. I don't know. Uh, I guess I just need to be on it in order for it to update. I kind of I kind of wish that it always got the information so it was just there but uh, I set all this stuff up at like two o'clock in the morning so I'm sure I I'm sure I did some things wrong but uh, yeah so those modules were pretty cool again going through you know the list of them I'm probably gonna I think I might end up writing some of this stuff up. Um, but I really liked uh, Drag Ruler and the uh, Pathfinding Ruler. Pretty darn cool. Uh, Radu Gen, the random dungeon generator. Um, it's got a purpose. It's definitely got a purpose. So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll probably use it. Uh, turn Marker, obviously we are using that in our game, or will be the next uh, time. 
and wall height is uh, pretty cool. I, I'm looking forward to playing around with wall height a little bit more. Um, I, I think Wednesday with doing some maps, I think that's definitely, uh, that's, that, that's in the cards for, for Wednesday. Um, and I'm going to keep that, that wall height, uh, module in mind. Cause that's gonna, that's gonna make for some really interesting maps, uh, being able to, being able to do that. So I am psyched about that, but, oh, it looks like looks like i've managed to go two hours by myself just sitting here talking like a crazy person um <laughs> so i mean i'd love to go longer i just don't really know what else i could uh go on about although next uh on on wednesday i'm sure when i when i start getting into doing maps and checking out the software uh yeah that that's probably going to end up being a very long stream, so, uh, but, yeah, well, I, I appreciate all of you guys dropping in, uh, I hope you check in more often, don't forget to, uh, follow, uh, if you're not following already, uh, we love our followers, I mean, that's, uh, it's just what it's all about, but, uh, and I may, I may do a little bit of streaming tomorrow as well, but, uh, as is our my schedule is going to be Tuesday or sorry Monday Wednesday and Friday uh, for our stream and uh, Friday of course every other Friday we've got a live game that will start about 930 and uh, well Monday Monday I'm gonna stick to my module Mondays Wednesdays Wednesdays or whatever Wednesdays. So if you have any suggestions of things, obviously we're going to keep it tabletop uh, oriented and foundry oriented. Uh, but if you have any suggestions of topics that you want covered, uh, go to my Discord. As a matter of fact, uh, let's see. Where is... We have... Oh, yeah. It's down there at the bottom. Mr. Underhill number 4707. You can shoot me a message on Discord. Or you can actually join Mr. Underhill's server. Uh, I will have to... Let me put a... Let me just put a link here to the server itself. I will do that before I sign off. Uh, I am going to... Yep. Uh, copy that. And... There we go. There is a link to our Discord. Feel free to join the server. And uh, you can go ahead and put suggestions in there. Um, yeah, Wednesdays is going to be sort of a whatever Wednesday. Uh, like I said, this week I'm going to... I I, I want to check out Dungeon Fog. Um, definitely looks like a very cool map program. And I'm very happy with... Uh, dungeon draft but uh we'll see what it does different um and then fridays fridays are foundry fridays so whatever uh, updates uh are going on within the foundry community itself uh i'll be going over that stuff so um yeah well thanks again guys for tuning in i appreciate every single one of you being here I will be back on Wednesday, if not sooner, and we will catch everyone later. Be safe out there.
Just keep through down my enemy. Can't put it back.